and you can define what you want to apply to which repo. That is a super convenient, especially for people need manage a lot of code modes. Hello developers, welcome back to iCodeIt. In this video, we're going to talk about the hyper mode, uh, a tool that uh, I recently discovered um, and that can simplify your uh, code mode um, application. Uh, so basically, it can uh, apply code mode uh, into a large scale of repositories, uh, your targeting repositories. Uh, so for example, you have already got a code mode that ready to go and uh, the repository that using your uh, the, the code you are going to converting is uh, not in your control. So you can use it to can, that can help you to simplify the uh, process. Help mode is developed by uh, Daniel Deco, one of my colleagues at Atlantia. I had a privilege to work with him uh, many years ago on the uh, Atlantia design system uh, refactoring. So in the project, we worked together on some code mode. Uh, we found the, uh, there's some common challenges uh, in uh, applying the code mode into large scale uh, code bases, like you know in Atlantia. Their Jira, uh, Confluence, uh, even Trello, they use uh, their design system components. And uh, it's very difficult to um, apply all the changes all together in all the different uh, code bases, uh, especially when we are um, in a you know, different group, different teams. Um, and uh, Daniel has been working on that field for many years and he got the um, uh, distilled all the patterns, uh, summarize all the knowledge into a common place called hyper mode. I found it's very useful, um, at least for my um, development of code mode. So uh, we will go to introduce this tool in this video. If you want to try it out or if you have any uh, requirement, you know, feature requirement, please let me know in the comments below. So let's get started. So if you haven't yet, I got a video on um, code mode 101, uh, basically covering all the uh, fundamental concepts in a code mode writing, uh, the SAST, for example, and all the other, like uh, the two uh, command line tools to help you to do that in your local repo. And uh, if you haven't yet, please check it out. So let's say you have finished your uh, code mode, you have verified it, you have tested it uh, completely, and you, you have this transform function ready. And you can apply that easily by using the JS code shift uh, command line tool in your local. But what happens if you have a lot of code bases you need to update? For example, you need to update a lot of other um, you know, products that are using your code that need the code mode. Um, it's not very easy, right? Especially when you have, let's say, many code code models and uh, you have a lot of code base need to apply them. That is not a very easy job to do, uh, if, especially when you have multiple uh, transforms and multiple uh, code bases. So Hypermode has addressed this issue very well. Uh, he managed all the transforms uh, in the library. Uh, it's called transform library. You basically define all your code mode into a library. And also on the other hand, it has uh, connected to different uh, code bases that need to apply the changes. So you can then, um, because it's help mode has already managed all of them, like they have reduced the, the uh, code, code base and the, on the other hand it has your code mode. And you can define what you want to apply to which repo. That is a super convenient tool, for, uh, especially for people need a lot of, um, manage a lot of code modes and uh, they need to apply that in a variety of code bases. I have a concurrent example in this video, but before we dive into that example, let's have some basic understanding of how the help mode works. So we need to understand the, 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 the process and some code, code concepts. Uh, it's, it's actually a very simple uh, process. So basically you need to install the uh, help mode into your code base. So let's say you have a, a GitHub repository. You basically, uh, Hypermode has a GitHub application. So you, you just uh, you know, authorize the Hypermode to access your repo. So it can quick the PR, uh, quick the, um, the workflow, uh, you know, GitHub actions. 
uh, if you haven't yet, I have uh, another video about GitHub Actions as well. But yeah, basically it has a one-off process. You need to install the help mode uh, into your repo, and then you need to connect your repo uh, with help mode so you can uh, preview the change you made when you when you compose uh, the code mode uh, in, in uh, hyper mode. Uh, you can see how the uh, the code mode applied to your repo looks like. Uh, you mean you may need to tackle some changes uh, there. And uh, yeah, that's basically step one. You need to install it. And the next concept is uh, sandbox. So sandbox is the environment uh, that you can compose, you can test, you can um, analysis, you can define your um, code mode, or we call it transform in hyper mode. Um, so basically, it's um, uh, it's you can think of it as as an IDE. It has everything ready for you to test your code mode. Uh, and uh, prototyping your code mode, you know. Once you're happy with the uh, before and after comparison, you can apply, you can you can preview the result uh, against the target repo. And uh, one of the beautiful thing in uh, Hyper Mode is uh, AI supporting. So basically, that you can ask the AI to generate the code mode, uh, at least the, the draft for you. And then you can refine, you know, uh, tangle all the edge cases. And the UI is very uh, intuitive. You can just see the before and the after, and and uh, we will see that in a minute. But basically, the UI is very straightforward. It's very intuitive. You can see the before and after um, uh, of your transform. And uh, the once you have once you happy with the result, the next step will be deployment. So basically. Uh, deployment means you will need to apply your changes to a target repositories. Uh, so you basically select a list of transforms you, you like to apply, and then you you define you, you select the uh, the targeting uh, repository you want the the, the change to be, and then um, the help mode will create the PR against your targeting repository, and um, then at that stage you can. Once you're happy with the result, you can just merge the PR, which is uh, relatively similar to what you already been doing your day-to-day -day work. The example we are going to look at in this video is a very simple avatar application. I think I use this example quite often in different uh, articles, blog posts. It's very easy to understand, and it also has a lot of uh, things to show. So let's say you have an avatar component and accept a name a purpose and a image. Uh, so if you have the name passed in, it's an optional uh, prop. If you pass it in and when you hover on it, uh, there will be a two tip shows up here, like so. But if you don't pass in the name, uh, obviously there will be no uh, two tip shows up. But uh, for people who don't pass in the name, because they require or like they import the avatar component, and the avatar component itself it require the two T because it will be conditionally rounded or not. Uh, so that makes the avatar component itself very big because it includes the two tip. But for people who don't use the name or the two tip, they still need to pay for the, you know, the load of the um, two tip, which is not fair to them. And one of the uh, refactoring we made on the design system was this one. Uh, actually, that's done by Daniel. Uh, that's a very uh, impressive uh, refactoring. I can remember that very uh, well, even like after several years. So the refactoring after, so this is the before and the after will be, we get rid of the uh, name from after and if for users who really want to use the tooltip, they can wrap it around a tooltip component. And for people who don't have the name, they don't have to pay for the tooltip um, uh, bundle size. You can think of that we will write that code mode first and test it out and see the before after. And then we apply that to a GitHub repository. So yeah, that's pretty much about the uh, contact setting. Let's go to the help mode uh, UI to see how we're going to uh, make this change. So you just go to the hypermode.io uh, to access the application. 
So collagen is in public testing in beta stage. Uh, you can have a look at the have a read of the uh, the features, the main features, uh, and the benefit you can get from it. I'm not going to uh, repeat all these, but you can have a read here. Uh, and we are going to go to the uh, dashboard directly. Uh, so here, if you go to your profile and uh, go to the dashboard, uh, this is where you're defined and uh, connecting all the repos. Uh, and then you manage your deployment and your uh, code base, uh, sorry, your code modes. Uh, so basically, in the dashboard, uh, you can manage your installation. So I will uh, need to connect one repo at least. Uh, so I will go to here, manage installation. And uh, this is a, a GitHub application, so you can config. Uh, and I will go to here. In the repository access here, you can define uh, which repo you want the hypermode to access. So I got a few uh, repos here, so I will just allow the uh, hypermode to access my code mode avatar to tip target, which is a repo I will show you in a minute. Um, so once I have this repo here, you can see um, I can now connect the repo. Uh, I can select this one and uh, connect repo. So basically that will uh, create a, um, what do you call that, a PR against my repo. Uh, and if I go to my repo here, that will be a PR list. And if you look at this PR, uh, it has changed one file, uh, which is um, GitHub workflow hyper mode. Uh, okay, I will just uh, uh, go to back to the PR. This is what you normally say in the hyper mode when you connecting your repo. Uh, it will read the, this, this PR, uh, and the file change will be only the um, hyper mode uh, workflow. And then the only thing you will need to do normally will be just to approve it. It's just a very simple um, change. And normally you would only need to like check the and then merge the, the request, uh, the pull request. And then once it's uh, merged, uh, you go back to your hyper mode. And uh, if you refresh the page, it's uh, connected. So you are all good, you're all set. And uh, the next step will be, as we said, in a sandbox. Um, you, can, you can use a sandbox as a uh, IDE to develop and to test your code mode and uh, because I have already done that before I will just uh, simply open it to show you how it looks like in a uh, uh, sandbox in the library tab there is a bunch of transforms and you can uh, if we go to this uh, particular transform it will open up the sandbox and uh, you can see here uh, that's pretty much the uh, uh, kind of ID, online ID, you can you can web ID, you can uh, edit the file and see the input and output. So this section is the input. Uh, that's the thing you are trying to uh, verify, like the before, and this is after. Uh, and there are a bunch of uh, other features here, and uh, uh, the AI is here in, in the promote. So normally you can put the some uh, what you call the prompt. Um, or instructions to AI and then uh, let it complete the current file. It will read the comments and um, generate the uh, corresponding code mode for you. Uh, I have already done that part, so I will just uh, quickly demonstrate what the uh, UI looks like. So there are other things like the, you can define as many other files as, as well. And uh, this one is the uh, EST, um, Explorer, you can check all the nodes, uh, the types. Uh, it's just to help you to do some debugging. And once you're happy with this uh, thing, uh, you can check the uh, final uh, comparison, the before and after. So for example, I have a user profile component. It has a usage of avatar with a name and image. This is the before, and I want the transform to uh, convert this part into something like this. So in a new after uh, conversion, you see the avatar uh, only has an image as a prop and the name is removed. 
and uh, there is a two tip component wrapped around the avatar and also because the two tip is a another lab uh, package so it has to be imported from the two tip uh, you see here there is no such line uh, if we so avatar is the first line but the, in here the two tip import two tip is the first line so that's exactly what I made in the code mode here. Uh, there's a function called tip import. So uh, it will ensure that when the name attribute is uh, shows up, we will ensure the tip is imported. Uh, and also it does all the um, other uh, conversion. And the ones we have paid with the, uh, the input and output comparison that we will need to see if it really works in a uh, in a targeting repository so in if we screw keep if we keep scrolling down uh, in this part uh, you can see there is a repository selector we can select the code mode avatar to tip selector uh, targeting uh, this is another repo and we can look at the avatar and it, it will compare the before and after uh, in a different form here as well so if we look at the youth profile uh, component uh, and it fetch the uh, repository fetch a file from the repository and and do the comparison so you can see here I am using the avatar with the image and the name and uh, the after is the, the two tip is wrapping around the avatar and the name is removed and moved actually into the two tip that is exactly what we are looking for uh, and for other things like uh, the index.jsx, we don't want to change anything. So now we are happy with the uh, final result. Uh, we can do deploy. So, uh, you can either do it here uh, or in a library and select the uh, transforms. So we can simply click the deploy here. And uh, in the deployment screen, you need to, uh, they will ask you to uh, define the pull request a little bit. We say move uh, to tip out of avatar, and uh, we can use that as a description as well. So now we need to select uh, which uh, repo we want to uh, apply our change. So obviously we need to do this. Uh, the code mode avatar to tip target is the repo we just uh, looking at here, and uh, it also asking which transform you want to deploy and we want to deploy this one move to tip out of uh, avatar and then we're happy with the uh, selection we can then do the deployment now we'll click that one it will correct the PR hopefully uh, in uh, targeting repository uh, let's see how it goes give it a few uh, seconds and then we go to the uh, repo and do a refresh if everything goes well we should be able to see a pull request here uh, github is uh, by default it doesn't allow the uh, the action to correct the pr so we need to turn on the settings in a, in the settings we go to the action uh, action in general and scroll down to the bottom if you see the allow github action to correct uh, and the approve pr is not ticked you need to tick that and save uh, and then you will be able to see a pull request created by the uh, uh, hyper mode and if we go to that uh, PR and if we look at the file change uh, you will notice that only one file changed which is the user profile the changes mm, from the avatar we're wrapping it around the two tip and also we import two tip uh, to the uh, uh, top line and then uh, yeah that's pretty much about the change uh, looks like exactly where, what we were looking for and if we're happy with the result we can simply uh, merge uh, yeah I'm, I think it's okay it's pretty safe to merge this uh, change if we go back to our local repository uh, and uh, pull the latest and we can start the application let's say uh, it should be running local um, 5173 
Okay, that is a compiling error. The design system to tip. We are uh, we need to change this one uh, to our local um, components. In real world, we could either do that in a, as an aliens or um, in a Webpack uh, resolver. We just uh, rename this one. Could even write another code mode to do this conversion. But I think this should be fine. We just do that here, and then in the uh, application you see it's working just fine as before um, and the code is changed totally uh, the tooltip now wrapping around the avatar uh, where the tooltip is from this package and yeah that's pretty much about the whole end-to-end -end process uh, let's review uh, yeah that's pretty much about the whole end-to-end uh, -end journey of how you use the hyper mode to apply your changes if we go back to uh, the hyper mode in the dashboard um, and uh, let's <coughs> so let's quickly recap what the uh, process is like so in a dashboard you can quickly so in a dashboard you can manage the installation uh, if you haven't yet you, you you will need to you know install the hyper mode io uh, github app into your uh, repository and then uh, you need to connect your repo uh, with the hyper mode and uh, then it will create a PR to uh, add the uh, the act GitHub actions to your repo and into in, in, you need to um, you need to approve that PR and merge the uh, the change and then uh, once you have that connection you can go to the sandbox uh, either by click a sandbox to create a new one or adding the existing one existing uh, transform <coughs> um, and uh, in a sandbox environment you can basically define and testing out your um, uh, transform once you're happy with the result you go to the uh, repository selector to compare the uh, before after uh, once you're happy with all the uh, result uh, you can simply do the deployment and then it will raise the PR against your targeting repo uh, and uh, yeah basically you need to sh uh, select the uh, the targeting repo maybe you have multiple repos that are using the avatar you want this chain to be uh, applied to automatically to these different repos and uh, yeah that's a, basically the brief introduction of hyper mode if you have any question about how to write code mode debugging or you want just familiar with the uh, the hyper mode environment uh, and you want to test it out please let me know in the comments below and uh, i will work with daniel to figure out how we can uh, make uh, access for you and uh, yeah that's pretty much about the video for today thanks for watching and i will see you next time bye